Hey everybody, Coach Matt here. Hey, thanks for taking a few minutes to join me. I really appreciate your time. And I hope you get something out of this like every single one I do every single week. A sector of the home ownership world out there that has picked up a piece of property and has a mature landscape in dire need of revitalization. So I kind of titled this one, Regaining a Mature Landscape's Youth and Vitality. And that's what we're discussing here today. You know, many times I read on social, social platforms like Reddit that somebody has bought their first house or a house and usually an older existing home. And they're perplexed on what, and more importantly, how to address an overgrown mature landscape and make it look nice again all in the while without having to break the bank. I had this very same thing with my first house many, many years ago. It was over 35 years old at the time I purchased it. I've discussed this landscape in various forms and fashions and the makeover that I applied to it over the course of 18 months. You can, you can check out those videos or parts of those videos on the YouTube channel. I speak to it in depth a little bit in the the ebook I'm trying to pedal called Landscaping Simplified. But this week we are drilling down on this topic and really focusing hard on what a DIYer can do to provide a revitalization to such an investment so it can be useful, beautiful, and functional for years to come for that new owner. So join me, won't you? I believe learning and solutions are afoot in this week's episode. Hey, my name is Matt and you can call me Coach. Every week I bring to you DIY landscape education, design concepts and theories in a hopefully easy to understand format so you guys, you can tackle projects yourself, get professional results that you're looking for, be a heck of a lot more self-reliant in this day and age, and save a boatload of money in the process. After doing that, doing that green industry thing for over 20 years as a successful self-employed landscape designer, contractor, educated in horticulture, retail nursery manager, I really believe strongly I bring with me a lot of knowledge and experience that I want to share with you, the new modern, educated, self-reliant homeowner of today. You know, in in my humble opinion, I think being a new homeowner is daunting enough, whether that is your very first home or your third home. For those of us who have been there, we know about the buying process and all it entails and taxes on us. But the packing and the moving and the resettling can be stressful and yes, exciting at the same time, but mostly stressful. You know, once in, we tend to settle back into reality over a, a period of time, sometimes short for some and much longer for others. And we start taking stock of our purchase and the neighborhood and the neighbors. We take notice of all things attached to this new address we call home both the good and in some cases the not so good. In some cases that can be the landscape itself. By now in your your settling mode you can just see that the landscape is just screaming for help and you knew this kind of sort of when you made the purchase. I mean we all know it to some degree. You know for someone like myself I probably look at the damn yard and the irrigation system and everything on purchases that I made before I ever looked and saw if the kitchen stove worked. But that's just me, I'm weird. So at this point now, it is that time. The time where you or somebody, depending on your checkbook size, has to address the issues that are before you as far as the landscape. You may have bought a beautiful kitchen and a brand new soaking tub and maybe a brand new bedroom on this house you have. But for all intent and purposes, you are that house on the block because your front yard or backyard is just crap. It looks like crap and it's kind of an eyesore driving down the street. Maybe, maybe not always. Those issues can be simple as far as correction or they can be rather complex. Let's take a look at a few of them. Uh, one of the ones that I used to see a lot is uh, the older homes. And when I used to get phone calls, it was uh, the mature trees that had been there for a long, long time, sometimes as much as 60, 80 years. And some of these branches and stuff of these mature trees are a real threat. They're not only a threat to the house that my potential customer had bought, but also a threat to the neighbor's houses and property. And those issues had to be addressed. 
Then the other thing is uh, what needs to be done with the irrigation. Maybe you have a five valve system out in the backyard and only three of them seem to be working correctly. The other ones, I don't know, you got this big bubbling wet spot that you have to address that was not caught during inspection. Here's another one. How about the cement work? If you're up in the northern latitudes and stuff, sometimes cement over a period of time can crack and exfoliate. And is it still usable or is it something that you have to address just to make it safe, just to make it functional again? How about drainage? If there is any, does the drainage system work? Does it flow? Have you stuck a hose down a downspout connected to a drain line and see if you actually have an outflow somewhere? If there was lighting there, is the lighting only half of it working? And the other half is not working for who knows what reason? And then there's the old greenscape. Plants that have overgrown their respective spaces and it needs to be addressed. What worked for the past owner or owners may not work for you. So how would you approach what you have? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about right now. Say you have a 50 year old home that you've purchased and the original owners are long since gone. Maybe the second and even third owners, you bought it from the fourth owner and they have all done their respective touches to the, to the landscape over the years. Maybe someone ripped out everything and put in something, but that was 35 years ago on the 50 year old house. And now you're moving in. So you have to determine really what is your need that you want to get from the landscape. How does what you're looking at fit or not fit for you and your family? Maybe you're a sustainable guy like I am. You want to take out some of the ornamental stuff and start putting stuff in that will at least give you some type of a harvest and a bounty once or twice a year. Maybe that's your niche. Maybe it's something where you don't want to have anything to do with all this big mature stuff. You just want a nice flat ground of lawn and you mow it once a week and call it good. So what fits and what does not fit is something that you have to determine very, very early on. Second, can you do this yourself? You know, revitalizing a mature landscape really calls upon the homeowner to dig deep as a DIYer or save money and pay a pro to do it. Reaching out and having a professional coming in and helping you is going to increase costs exponentially without any second thought. What may cost uh, $1,000 for you to go out and trim and hack and weed and mow and tear out and put back in, you might spend 1500 bucks. If you call a professional in, you better be prepared to have a $4,000 check, plus or minus, depending on the size and the complexity. Another thing you have to think about is, do you have the tools at your disposal? I didn't say you owned the tools necessarily, but you have them at your disposal, either through friends and family or through renting or whatever, you can lay your hands on what's gonna be needed power tools, hand tools, whatever, whatever it takes. You know how to go about finding those and sourcing them and pricing them out. And then how does that fit into any sort of a makeover revitalizing budget? Speaking of budget, that's number four. Are you financially prepared for the project? You just bought a new house, you know, and maybe you're in a new town and you're having to assimilate into this town and neighborhood and everything else and you've spent a lot of money moving, you're, you've got other plans for dollars inside the house, so are you financially prepared for the project that you're staring in the face right now? You have to be financially prepared. This is not something that's really good financial sense to uh, credit card it out if you don't know when you would be paying that sucker off. I want to have everything kind of paid for in advance except for the house. Fifth, will the end game, whatever you decide to do, will the end game improve the property value? Is it going to be more functional, more aesthetically pleasing to the eye? That is greatly important when it comes to before you put a shovel in the ground or a chainsaw on a limb. Am I improving what I'm doing or I'm just willy nillying it. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I don't know what it's going to be at the end. So think about that. What's the end game? Sixth, and probably just as important as anything we've already talked about, time. Do you have it? And can you attain the amount of time 
as what is needed to do the job correctly. There's some things to think about. In many circumstances, we can blend a very important word here in this week's episode, blending the existing with your new demands and wants from your landscape. Keep existing trees, fencing, hardscape, stuff that could be worked around and in, and the existing can be made over or pruned or reshaped or reused so that old and new blend together functionally and beautifully all at the same time. But there are those examples where your needs cannot be met by any of what still exists and a total makeover is called for. To the ground type of makeover. This was my niche in the landscape construction industry. I, I specialized in existing yards and although there was many, 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 many jobs I did where the blending took place, I would say at least half, maybe 60%, were always take it down to the ground mat and we're starting new. So there are those issues, but that's a pretty penny. You know, it really is. And what I'm trying to impress upon you is revitalizing a mature landscape doesn't necessarily mean, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. You can do it, and I'm not saying on the cheap. I don't like that word. You can do it frugally and maybe as a DIYer over time as your resources allow, but you have a game plan and you have a timeline. That first, uh, that first house I had, it took me 18 months of cleaning, ripping, tearing. Have you ever taken a fan palm out? California fan palm that's probably 25 years old? Oh my God, that took me l longer to get that thing out of the yard than the rest of the yard combined. So 18 months. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna talk specifically to the blend approach. I do this for the cost savings, I do this because of the DIY capabilities I like to impart on you guys and enabling you to accomplish the makeover without huge, huge complications. Here are some suggestions on how to go about it. And this will reflect a little bit in some of the other podcasts that I've had and certainly some other the videos on the YouTube channel. But let's start off with communication communication and clarity with all those involved as to what is needed and wanted. Two, create a demolition punch list that you can do yourself and what needs professional help. Make that line in the sand where I'm gonna do all of this, but that 50 foot maple tree that I cannot have lifting the patio anymore, I'm gonna call somebody to do it because I just don't have that kind of tree removal skill. Three, Create a landscape design, very, very, very important. This is your roadmap on paper. Create a landscape design that reflects the finished product after all improvements come to fruition. At all times, thinking about resale down the road, something that'll work for you and then work for you if you ever put a sign in the yard saying for sale. So make sure you wanna appeal to everything that you need but also appeal to those who would become shopping. If you decide to plunk in a in-ground pool and it takes up the whole yard and you have no place for kids to run around or anything else, that will appeal to some people and others it will turn them off because it's not a multifunctional yard. Number four, give realistic thought about how long you will be here at this particular house and what dollars should be invested in the property versus the length of time that you are planning on remaining. If you're gonna be there 18 months because the job brought you here, and you know in 18 months you're gonna be moving up in the company and you're gonna be relocating to ABC Town, unless it's a, a good financial move, why would you go plunking $50,000 down for an 18 month stay? Unless you're gonna get $100,000 back at the time you sell. So a little bit of you know, due diligence would be in order. And finally, guys, get her done. Get it done. Do not hesitate, do not put it off. Get in, get sweaty, get sore, do what you can, bring the people in that you need to do and revitalize that mature landscape with a blended approach so that everybody, everybody is happy with it and it's going to serve your purpose for the time that you're gonna be there. 
One of the things about mature landscapes is it can really be revitalized through pruning, through shaping, through uh, removal in some cases, thinning in some cases, and then double checking all your hardscape stuff. Double checking the, the irrigation, the drainage, what, what needs to be addressed in those things. You know, drain lines that aren't draining aren't necessarily broken, they're probably just clogged. And a plumber can come out and put one of their blasting snakes up in there and they can clean it out in a hurry. And it's perfectly functional once you clean it out. It just hasn't been maintained. The youth and vitality of a mature landscape can be regained with the blending of old and new, with the needs and wants and desires that you want from your new landscape. The new plants, yeah, well, if you're gonna plunk a lot of new plants in, it's gonna require some time to grow and to become impactful on your new landscape. The old is already there. The blend is where the new, you know, where the new vitality is gained. You know, new colors, new blooming perennials, an opened up and scaffold out maple tree so that it looks pretty again. It looks purposeful again. It is safe again. That goes a long ways to blending that old and new. You know, when you, you start putting new colors from perennials, selective pruning for new shapes and structure on existing trees and shrubs, repairs and updates to irrigation and lighting. Uh, hardscape functions can all be done by you with a little coaching. A little confidence building and timelining your efforts in and around your busy, busy lives. Like I stated earlier, it took me 18 months in my first thing. Are you prepared to dig in for 18 months and still live a life? If there is anything I can leave you with on this topic, it's this. Something attracted you to this home, this neighborhood, this town. Now that you are here, what truly benefits you, your family and your property value? More times than not, blending the new and old using a creative eye can really lead to a truly revitalized, youthful landscape that meets all your needs, both right now and for whatever period of time you're gonna be there. Plus, your property value will reflect your efforts. You know something, guys? If there is any questions you have about a project you are considering, feel free to email me. Email is always at the bottom of the, of the show here. And what we can help solve for you. Let's dive into it a little bit in writing. Hey, please check out the website and consider supporting our efforts that we bring every single week. We will be back next week for you. I thank you for staying this far into the episode. Hope you got something from it. If there's a question that I did not answer throughout this episode, again, drop me a line. Guys, I will see you next week. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Yard Coach Podcast. Don't forget to head over to the website at youryardcoach.com where you will find more DIY landscape education, including the free 15-step DIY landscape checklist, Coach Matt's ebook called Landscaping Simplified, and the flagship digital course, Homescape 1.0. As always, if you have any questions or comments, you can email Coach Matt directly at youryardcoach at gmail.com. We'll see you right here next week.